Okay, basically, basically, there are something like 40,000 jobs that are demanded by the fourth industrial revolution industries that cannot be filled at the moment because of a digital skills gap. While well, there are about 90,000, um, 90, sorry, 90 million jobs, 40 million jobs, 90 million jobs, of where you have a surplus of those who are who are not, um, a yeah, surplus of those who are the low skills. The strategies within the within this period, really, there are many strategies, but there are two strategies that are very important, especially for those of us who are based in the universities. One is human resource capacities and the other is the capacity for innovation and to innovate very fast. But it's interesting, it's, some countries are more strategic than others. I just wanted to show a job based on Okay. So this is a change in paradigms in, in Singapore from traditional to open systems, from pre-employment as continuing education, so pedagogy versus andragogy, single versus multimodal tracks, degree versus micro-credentialing, uh, interesting. So you have the growing movement against the four-year course, and it's a lifelong learning. You can move in and out. And then this is the future of credentials, uh, micro-credentialing, digital badging, nano-degrees. And then in, I, they, they did more, but I want to show you the core curriculum. Of course, capacities. Basically, capabilities in calculating math mathematics for everyone, calculus, fundamental statistics, modes of thinking, computational uh, thinking, critical thinking, innovative and creative thinking, judgment and decision making. Then, then you have you have managing. So, they, so that's part of it, writing and reasoning skills. And then technology and society, culture and modern world, enhanced community uh, uh, service. And I'm bringing in Singapore here, and I'm bringing in also Malaysia, because they're very strategic about where they want to go. They know this is how, this is the fourth industrial revolution, we have to do it this way. This, then you have the curriculum structure is more fluid and more organic, I won't go into this because there's not much time, but, but basically, and maybe this is also the challenge to public administration, the way we teach public administration cannot be the same our best teachers in public administration can no longer be the best teachers of the next generation, particularly if we have uh, freshies from Generation Z whose, uh, whose attention span is only 8 seconds compared to millennials whose attention span is 12 seconds who can multitask with five things at the same time. So I guess, I guess this is really for them to survive in this world and for us to be able to hone the competencies for survival in the fourth industrial revolution, a fourth industrial revolution, we have to actually, we have to actually treat each them, and the learning process may must not be the same. So this is this is actually from this is Malaysia. They're also very keen about how they do it. So they're learning and teaching 4.0. They have the 21st pedagogies, of course, these are all experiments. But anyway, there are, there are different technologies, and I think, I think we just have to explore them. And then, and then the latest. But the other thing is innovations. So, so what is it that, that is important now is that we're able to translate knowledge into, into technologies, into social as well as technical technologies, we're able to innovate and encourage innovation, and we're able to encourage innovation among our students. So basically, we give them innovation spaces. That has also to be done in a very mindful way. Beyond the SDGs, and I would like to end with this, it is necessary to bring both the promise of technological innovation beyond anything we have seen from universities and industry, and at the same time face the social chaos of inequality. Actually, there has been a change in the development discourse. So, from development, for instance, to globalization. The shift in discourse was a shift in coordinates. It did not mean that development was no longer important. It meant that the focus is now on the comparative advantage of a country vis-a-vis -vis other countries. Find your own niche in the market was actually the mantra of, of global competitiveness versus catch up with the developed world, etc. 
So, so that, that shift, and in a way, we are still in the era of globalization despite its, its discontents. But we are in, in an era where inequality actually grew. The, there was a very big I guess, increase in the there's a growth that uh, was, was palpable in the world, but it's global. In the same way that economists are debating now about whether the fourth industrial revolution will actually lead to a reduction of jobs. Because they're saying, no, there will be more jobs, in fact, because of greater productivity. But it's a global thing. In other words, globally, or in particular nations, you will actually have an increase in jobs, but, but there are people who are going to lose along the way. So even that will have, will have to be understood. And inequality is going to be our major issue. So if you have inequality and poverty worsening for certain groups, then you superimpose on that this whole thing about the human brain and simplistic thinking and the bias. The human, the human brain might be more biased unless the elite, including intellectual elites, are actually able to continue the democratic impulse. If you superimpose that, then we are in a relatively chaotic situation. Just look at the world now and you already know. So when you think about innovation, universities need to face the fact that they will increasingly face the ethical challenge of ensuring that the benefits of innovation are shared with those that need them most, not only those that can pay for them. There are structural issues in the space. So we're back to, in fact, the sustainable development goals. If you talk from development to sustainable development goals, sustainable development is a, is, is a contradiction in itself. It was a compromise of the environment and economic development, and so we have sustainable development. But basically, we would go back to structures. There are structures that actually prevent us from addressing inequality. A uh, revolution of institutions, a revolution of minds to ensure that we have a fair sh people have a fair share of the world's wealth. At the end of the day, development coordinates have changed over time. But the persistent issues of poverty and equality that we have studied since we were young, uh, they actually remain a large part of their world. So the fourth industrial revolution is a wonderful thing, but it is also a, a dangerous thing if you're not able to put that act together. And I guess at this point in history, the challenge to the so-called elites, not the economic elites, but us, is greater because you also feel we don't even know how to handle a situation where populism and simplistic thinking is now more dominant. Thank you.